December 25th, 2002, New Rochelle, New York. I'm home from college and I am exactly where I belong, at the movies. I'm with my dad and my sister about to see a matinee of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Dad pays for the tickets and as we walk into the lobby, a middle-aged woman passes me on the right. She says to me, it's a good day to see a movie. I say, yes it is. Then she says, it's a good day to be a Jew. I say, yes it is. For the uninitiated, this is Jewish Christmas. We Jews also get the day off on Christmas, whether we care or not. We are bored. Nothing to do because nothing is open except for movie theaters and Chinese restaurants. <laughs> Thus began the glorious tradition of catching a flick and going out for Chinese on Christmas Day. It is a widespread and time-honored secular American classic. I grew up in a suburban town just north of New York City with a sizable Jewish population. As a kid, I did not know that there were people out there who would someday find my Judaism interesting, <laughs> surprising, or even exotic. As an adult, I often hear things like, oh, wow, you're Jewish? Or, hey, I tried a latke once. We are the same. Or, it's okay, sweetie, you can still have a Christmas tree. <laughs> and that's the worst. Like, they pity me because I don't do their holiday. Like, I am deprived. I call it Christian chauvinism. And because of people who say that kind of shit to me and because of all the stores playing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year on repeat forever, I'll tell you what, if there is a war on Christmas, I'm a fucking general. <laughs> My hometown has many synagogues and only one Chinese restaurant. On Christmas Day, Seven Walks is packed. You know why? because we don't need no fucking Santa. We don't care if your bells are jingling. We don't care if you've been naughty or nice. We stand up in our outsideness. We recognize each other in public space, outside of synagogue, in our apartness and our togetherness. We are citizens on Christmas, past the egg rolls. <laughs> December 25th, 2004. I've graduated college, I live in New York City, and I've met this guy. He's tall, lanky, artsy, moody, like Shaggy Doo in a black turtleneck with an attitude. We've been dating for almost a year, and I'm going to meet his family at Christmas. Christian Christmas. Methodist Christmas. This will be my first venture from the outside of this holiday to the inside. Come with me through the portal. I arrive in his tiny New England hometown, a Hallmark movie in real life. I walk in the front door and his parents, Charles and Nancy, put a Santa hat on my head. <laughs> this is a new experience. I have never had a Santa hat on my head before. I am told I look adorable. Initiation or hazing? <laughs> there is a Christmas tree. All the ornaments are ancient family heirlooms. Beautiful angels, tiny musical instruments, sweet precious songbirds. All of them have significance and sentimental value. All of them are extremely breakable. All of them must go onto the tree in a precise order. Decorating the tree isn't a fun project, it's a somber responsibility. <laughs> Nancy and Charles are frugal and anti-materialistic, so all Christmas gifts are practical things. Packages of underwear, a new set of rubber spatulas from Target, pencils. Oh Items like these are given with sincerity and received with gratitude. There is a gift for me, a box of gold-colored paper clips. Nancy says to me, 
the gold color inspired me. However, this family is also very much into creative self-expression. So every package of spatulas is wrapped beautifully and decorated with special ornaments they've been collecting and saving for years. Antique ribbons, bows, cards with pictures of angels, silk flowers, little sparkly knickknacks all come out of their boxes. Common household items transformed into high holiday art, a sight to behold. We are going to church. This family is agnostic-ish, but church is their musical outlet. Charles is the choir director and Nancy plays the organ. We are going to a late night service. The church will be all lit up and at midnight, we will participate in a candlelight procession. I am into this idea, it sounds very nice. But as I sit on the old wooden pew, I realize that before we get to the midnight part with the lovely candles, we have to get through a lot of New England Methodist Christianity. <laughs> At this church, that means a lot of liturgy about the birth of the Christ child. <laughs> the miracle baby born to a literal virgin, the king of the Jews, the answer to the prayer of the Jewish people, basically. Baby Jesus means that Judaism is now fulfilled, irrelevant, canceled, Messiah achievement unlocked, move up to the next level, Jews, Christianity for all, huzzah. <laughs> I try to maintain a cool, detached, anthropological frame of mind, but I just can't do it. So I squirm on my pew and clutch my candle, anxiously waiting. I read in the program that the last song of the evening will be joy to the world. I am ready to belt out, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> but that's not the song this program is referring to. Despite these jarring moments of ick, various bumps on the road from outside to inside, I have a good time. Charles and Nancy are so sweet. Nancy only wears frumpy old-fashioned dresses. She doesn't own pants. Charles is into traditional Japanese musical instruments. They sing together while Nancy plays the piano. They are so wholesome. I am convinced they time-traveled here from a bygone era or popped out of a storybook. And they show each other affection. They are nothing at all like my New Yorker parents. My mom, the smart-ass attorney, and my dad, the perpetual workaholic. Although they are affectionate towards me and my sisters, I have never seen my parents hug or kiss each other or even say nice things. They only scream at each other. Behind closed doors or in the same room with us, doesn't matter. They finally divorce when my youngest sister finishes high school, and we are amazed that they lasted as long as they did. So being here in New York, I, in New England, I think maybe this is how parents are supposed to behave. And I spend every Christmas with Nancy and Charles for a whole decade. They become my fake in-laws because their son and I never actually get married. We all just settle into each other. I get to know cousins, aunts, uncles, racist grandmothers, family, friends, and coworkers during these 10 Christmases. I cherish being part of this family. I look forward to Christmas every year. We develop our own traditions, hot drinks by the fireplace, playing Jim Rummy and Settlers of Catan, taking evening walks to see this one neighbor's over the top light display. The Santa hat becomes my Santa hat. The next year, Hanukkah falls at the same time as Christmas, and I wanna light the candles. I'm not very observant, but lighting the candles connects me to my community, my history, the ancestors, sends light into darkness, and so forth. Nancy, procures a leftover menorah from a friend of hers who grew up Jewish, but more recently accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Everyone in the family watches as I light the candles and recite the blessings in this creepy way 
where my religion is suddenly on display, like I am performing a show. <laughs> Nancy is enchanted every year going forward. She wants me to light the Hanukkah candles for everyone, whether it is Hanukkah or not. <laughs> and she always wants it to be the eighth night, whether it is the eighth night or not. <laughs> the next year, my boyfriend gives me the first couple of seasons of Lost on DVD. Thank you. Mainly so that he can rewatch them. Remember DVD sets? It's a good gift. We both love this show and we enjoy watching it together. My boyfriend and I lived together by the following Christmas. In sin, since... <laughs> Since we have decided to be, a cohabiting, to be cohabiting life partners rather than a married couple, we begin gifting each other the household goods that normal people would put on a wedding registry. A gorgeous stainless steel frying pan, a high quality zester, a huge stone mortar and pestle. Plus, this year I get the latest season of Lost. Season three, my favorite season. Next year, I skip church, which I feel bad about because I miss out on Charles and Nancy's concert of music I hate. I receive another lost DVD set. The show is getting weirder. The writer's strike is on, but we're still watching, still taking the leap of faith that everything will go right. Next year, Nancy is stressed. Worse, Nancy is emotionally distraught. The fun parts of the holiday are too much work for her and she accuses everyone of taking advantage of her giving nature. My boyfriend and I take over every step of making dinner, but we don't do the dishes right away, so she does them herself before we even sit down to eat and then refers to herself as the scullery maid. I begin craving lo mein. I suggest that maybe tomorrow night we go out for Chinese. I am told that the Chinese restaurants in this town are terrible. How do I feel about Thai? I received season five of Lost, despite how the show is going steadily downhill. This is official, officially a gift-giving running gag. Next year, in a fit of tears, Nancy goes upstairs alone. When she comes downstairs, we discover she has chopped off her long peppery gray hair, which moments ago hung down her back. Now it reaches her chin. Meanwhile, season six of Lost is under the tree for me. <laughs> Dressed in ribbons. Season six was terrible. No rewatch value, not even to hate watch. Neither of us wants this gift. It's no longer a running gag. It's a bad habit. Tensions within the family are coming to a boiling point every year. In the face of my boyfriend's explosive temper, which lies just beneath his moodiness, I try to stay positive. I say to him, we'll do it better next year. We'll fix it next year. We'll simplify it next year. Next year, next year. I suggest maybe we go to the movies tomorrow and catch whatever is playing. But my boyfriend only likes superhero movies and Nancy hates explosions and loud noises. We watch a movie on TV instead. I miss the popcorn with the fake butter. I miss being out in public on Christmas. I miss being on the outside of this holiday. I wonder if I'll ever have my day back. Next year comes. I arrive in New England late this year and Nancy informs me that she lit the Hanukkah candles herself. She didn't say any prayers, she told me. She just liked how it looked. My religion was there for her aesthetic pleasure. Next year, ominously, Charles pulls me aside and asks if we can find a few minutes to speak in private. I say, sure, but the private moment never comes. In retrospect, I have a guess at what he wanted to say. Something like, Heidi, we love you, you are family, 
You are surely the best thing that has ever happened to our beloved only son, and we know it. So when he breaks up with you next week, please know that we will miss you. New Year's Day is one long fight, but my boyfriend fails to pull the trigger. I offer to move out that very day, but he begs me to stay, promising me some garbage promises. So the actual breakup doesn't happen until April. It's a clean break. He moves in with Charles and Nancy until our lease runs out. I, un I, d uh, I unfriend all his cousins on Facebook. I unfriend Nancy and Charles. I delete them from my phone. Charles never gets to say his goodbye. Neither do I. My sister likes to tell me I should have married the guy so that I could be properly divorced instead of being fake divorced. <laughs> he got his family in our fake divorce. He got our cat too. I got Jewish Christmas back. Yay! December 25th, 2014, White Plains, New York. I am at the movies. My sisters and I see a matinee of Into the Woods, then my brother-in-law and baby niece join us for dim sum. This year, the stores... The stores imploring everyone to have yourself a merry little Christmas are not singing to me. The commercials offering great deals for everyone on your list are not winking at me. There are no delicate trees, no Santa hats, no pictures of angels. I'm done. I'm out. Before this day, I had no idea how exhausting it had been to love a holiday that wasn't mine. It is a relief to be free of it. My shoulders drop. I am filled with gratitude. I am exactly where I belong. Heidi Handelsman, everyone. Heidi Handelsman. <laughs>